Greetings, I'm Hurt Castro, coming to you from our state-of-the-art suspension development center in Colorado Springs. Today we're going to learn how to service the RockShox Monarch rear shock. Here are the four steps. First, remove the air can. Second, service the damper assembly. Third, service the IFP and damper body. Fourth, reassemble the rear shock. Unless you've done this many times before, we sure do recommend that you check out this RockShox technical manual, which is on the SRAM website as a PDF. Please print these out and read through them before you put your bike in the stand. Okay, enough preliminaries, let's get down to business. Before we get to the air can, remove the shock from the bike and remove the shock mounting hardware using either your fingers or a pair of pliers. Place an oil pan on the floor underneath the shock. Turn the rebound adjuster fully counterclockwise toward the rabbit. If applicable, switch the gate to the full open, unlocked position. Remove the swivel air valve cap. Using a small tool, depressurize the air can by depressing the valve. Using a Schrader valve tool, remove the valve core from the swivel valve. Using a Schrader valve tool, remove the nitrogen port cap. Using a small tool, depressurize nitrogen by depressing the valve. Using a Schrader valve tool, remove the nitrogen valve core. To avoid injury, all air or nitrogen pressure must be released from the shock prior to servicing. Secure the shock sideways by the air can shaft eyelet into your bench vise. Use aluminum vise soft jaws to protect the shaft eyelet when clamped. Grip the air can and turn counterclockwise to unthread it. Improve your grip by spraying isopropyl alcohol on the air can and wiping it with a clean rag. Remove the air can. You may need to use a strap wrench to help unthread the air can. If possible, avoid placing the strap wrench on the logo sticker. Once the air can is completely unthreaded, pull the can away from the vise to remove it. There will be a slight vacuum to overcome, so you might have to pull firmly before the can comes off completely. Remove the negative spring bumper from inside the air can. Using a 2mm hex, unthread and remove the bleed screw located in the red seal head. The white compression ball may float up through the bleed hole. This is okay. If this happens, simply remove the ball from the bleed hole. Using an adjustable wrench, loosen and remove the seal head and shaft assembly from the shock body. Oil will spill from the shock body and or shaft assembly. If the white ball didn't already come out, hold the shaft eyelet with one hand and push the seal head toward the air can cap with your other hand to expose the bleed hole on the underside of the seal head. Be careful not to pinch your fingers as you slide the seal head. Use a small allen key to push and remove the white compression ball out of the backside of the seal head through the bleed hole. Spray the entire shaft assembly with isopropyl alcohol and wipe with a clean rag. Using a pick, remove the seal head outer glide ring and outer seal. Also, using a pick, remove the piston glide ring. Apply a small amount of grease to the new seal head outer glide ring and outer seal and piston glide ring, then reinstall them. Remove the shock body from the vise and pour the remaining oil into your oil pan. Wrap a rag around the end of the shock body Thread the Monarch nitrogen fill valve adapter into the nitrogen fill port, then thread a shock pump onto the adapter. You can pump air into the body to remove the IFP. Use the rag to catch the IFP as it leaves the shock body. Spray isopropyl alcohol on the inside and outside of the shock body and wipe with a clean rag. Inspect the inside of the shock body for scratches. Spray the IFP with isopropyl alcohol and wipe it with a clean rag. Using a pick, Carefully remove the IFP O-ring. Apply a small amount of grease to a new O-ring and reinstall. Insert the IFP into the shock body with the stepped side visible until it's seated just inside the damper body. Using a measuring tool, set the IFP height as indicated in this table. Measure the IFP height from the bottom of the step on the IFP. Using a Schrader valve core tool, install the nitrogen valve. Clamp the damper body back into the vise by the shaft eyelet. Pour in new 2.5 weight oil until it's level with the top of the shock body. 
adjust the gate to the full open or unlocked position. Using a 1.5mm hex wrench, depress the poppet valve at the bottom of the shaft assembly. This will ensure oil entry to the shaft. The poppet should not remain open. Check to make sure all damping adjustments are set to fully open. Slide the seal head down against the piston. Holding onto the seal head, place it onto the shock body. Now thread the seal head and shaft assembly onto the shock body. You should see bubbles and oil come out of the bleed port on the seal head. Make sure not to push on the shaft or shaft eyelet. This will displace too much oil out of the shock body. Using a torque wrench with a 17mm crow's foot installed at a 90 degree angle, torque the shaft assembly to 250 inch-pounds. Insert a new white compression ball into the bleed hole. Using a 2mm hex, gently thread the bleed screw into the bleed hole until you feel it touch the white compression ball. Tighten an additional one half turn. Spray the assembly with isopropyl alcohol and wipe it with a clean rag. Remove the shock from the vise. We've mentioned nitrogen a number of times, but you can use air for this next step. Using a gauged pump and the Monarch valve adapter, pressurize the shock body to 200 to 300 psi. Use a Schrader valve tool to reinstall the nitrogen port cap. Using a pick, remove the dust wiper, internal glide ring, and two air can seals from the air can. Apply a small amount of grease to the new dust wiper, glide ring, and two air can seals and reinstall. Slide the negative spring bumper, angled side first, onto the shock body. Reposition the shock in the vise to install the air can. Push the air can onto the shock until the can makes contact with the large eyelet, then start turning the can clockwise to engage the threads. The air can should then be torqued firmly by hand. Install the red travel indicator o-ring, then install the swivel air valve core. Finally, pump the shock up to the appropriate pressure for your customer. Then cap it and you're done.